Hello and welcome to another Pharaoh, <coughs> excuse me, Angel um, Productions. Um, today we are going to talk about episode three and four, maybe five, six, seven, eight, and nine <laughs> of um, the monster Jeffrey Dahmer story. <gasps> So let's get into it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe because nobody's subscribing, but people are watching. So can you just, so can you just subscribe, subscribe, subscribe? Okay, so with episode three, I got my notes. Got oh oh oh, got my notes. So with episode three, what had happened was, <laughs> what had happened was, um. Sorry, I'm trying a new position today, and girl, the baitness of it all, the baitness, the baitness. Um, so episode three, um, so, jump back to 1959, the time is 1959, autumn, Milwaukee, um, so this is the episode where they talk about his first victim, the one that they found scattered around his dad's house, front yard or backyard or wherever it was, his garden. And um, we find out the story. Um, he was the hitchhiker. I think I touched on this on the last episode. Um, Jeffrey misreads the signs, goes in for a kiss. The dude wasn't feeling it, called him a faggot. Then Jeffrey basically whacked him over the head with a weight. I don't know if I went over this. I feel like I've gone over this. <gasps> I did go over this. Shit. So I'm not going over three, four, five. Okay, excuse me. Um, so it's episode four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine that we're doing this episode. I did episode three last episode. I thought something sounded familiar. I felt like I already described this before. Um, so, let's get into it again, part two, part two, episode. This is where, um, he tries to use the, oh, I have a condition, it's splanchnophilia, but we'll get into that later. Um, so he never killed anyone after his first victim, um, for nine years. So he was fighting the urge of this splanchnophilia for nine years. And, um, so I touched on that he put the bones in the oven so that he could smash them into tiny pieces, which is why he scattered it around his dad's ash um, garden. I'm assuming that he probably thought that, like, foxes or whatever animals that um, Americans have would come and pick up the bones, eat them, and move them along. Um, so, basically... This he so he went to the therapist. The therapist diagnosed him with splanchnophilia. So this is basically is where someone finds it sexually arousing, cutting the bodies, cutting into bodies and organs. And when someone finds vis viscera, internal organs and sexually organs sexually arousing. Let's go back. So it's when someone finds viscera. And internal organs sexually arousing and that's usually because of the shine it has the shiny effect that it has and apparently humans are um, hardwired to find um, shiny things attractive so anyway so his dad comes back from for his graduation he then tries to I felt like he tried to confess his sins <laughs> to his dad when he was at dinner with him and his new wife and his dad cut him off sent him off to uni he then got expelled from uni so then his father sent him to the army who, where he continued to spike guys drinks lord knows what he was doing to these guys in the army and then this is where he found out about halcyon because he was a um what was he he was like a medic or something like that. Oh, these notes are not that great. I, was, I started to lose interest. Okay, so he um, 
he was like a medic or like a field medic or something like that that he was training to be in the army he found out about how Sion where it would basically knock you out for hours and hours and hours and they will not feel a thing and this is where it gets dark so he started to knock people out and this is where he started to like get dark where he used to knock people out so, so that they wouldn't feel a thing and then he could do whatever the hell he wanted to do to them that's basically the running theme throughout these episodes so he learns about Halcyon. This is where he picks it up. Um, he then gets discharged from the army again. A year later. He then gets a job as a butcher. His grandma finds the male mannequin and throws it out and he goes nuts. Um, i trying to think what else happens. That's... Oh, and then he goes to the country fair. His grandma's like, oh, you should go to the country fair. There's like a beer thing. I felt like the grandma was trying to set him up. Like after he already, after she already was like, you need to stop drinking. She's like, oh, there's a beer um, festival thingy going on down the road. You should go to it. Where's the sense, please? Where's the sense? So anyway, he goes. um, And then he starts hallucinating about the hitchhiker that he murdered. But it's not the hitchhiker, it's a um, pinball machine. And he starts having sex with the pinball machine. And then gets arrested and loses his job. He then gets a job as a blood donor. And then he starts um, stealing (laughs) bags of blood. And then he starts drinking the blood. And this is where the cannibalism starts. Like... I have never known someone to get so many chances in their life. He was extremely lucky. Like, if he was of any other colour, he would not be getting these chances. He would not be close to blood. He would not be close to um, dead meat or whatever. He wouldn't be close to human beings, full stop. Like, I don't understand. The amount of chances this guy got, and for what? I don't understand the appeal. I do not. I do not. Okay, so that's the rundown of episode. Oh, no, it's not. So then we go to 1987. Oh, my God. He goes to a gay bar, gets picked up by a guy, and they head to the gay sauna. Oh, this part. Mm-mm. So he has his first time cuddling with a guy, probably doing a little something up in there. And then this is where he gets twisted. He starts using this house Sion. House of Sion. Um, and starts taking guys down there and drugging them, drugging them, spiking their drinks, drugging them, and doing Lord knows what. And then one of them dies. Oh no, do, does, do they die? They may have died, or they may have. No, I don't think they do die. He, um, the owner of the sauna, it's a gay sauna. If you know about gay saunas, then you know what goes on in a gay sauna. But, um, the owner of the gay sauna calls the ambulance. The ambulance comes and resuscitates the guy and they find the drug that basically knocked him out. And then he tries to come back with another guy. And then the man's like, oh, you should... To the, to the guy, he's like, oh, you should run away from this guy. He's been spiking guys for a long time. Where's the? Why isn't the police being involved? Why are you still here, like... Like, no police, why has no police been involved? I don't understand. I get it that it's a gay sauna and probably in those times you couldn't do those types of things. And um, it's probably very, very, very taboo and you probably would have had your business shut down. But even still, the safety of your customers, please. First and foremost. So then the guy runs off, <laughs> which I'm thinking, thank God. Because that would have, you've been victim number three um, or two at this point. Um, so then, uh, and then he gets fired from, he gets fired again. Oh my god, this guy gets so many chances. Um, so then he goes back to the gay bar to pick up a guy, another one, and then takes him to a fancy hotel and the guy's like why don't we go to the sauna this is way too fancy for me this is way too fancy for what we're about to do we're about to mess this place up we're about to turn this fancy place into a naughty naughty dungeon 
And he's like, oh, no, 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 there's some nasty. I don't want to go there. Jeffy's like, they're nasty. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Like, why do we have to go there? So then the guy's like, okay, well, at least I ain't paying. If I ain't paying for it, then let's tear, tear this place up. Let's have the time of our lives. Not Him not knowing that this is going to be the last time of his life. But anyway. So then, <laughs> this is where it's funny. So he, I think this is where it starts getting, a bit, he's a bit new to the whole spiking of the drinks and the in front of people's faces. So he basically um, makes a drink, spikes it, and then the other guy, I think, takes the non-spiked drink. And then he's drinking the spiked drink, and then he's basically, his head's basically spinning, because he's obviously um, spiked himself. And then he's trying to convince the other guy to, um, what was his name? Stephen. Stephen Toomey. So he's trying to convince the other guy to, um, what's it called? To, to have another drink, because he wants to obviously spike him and do whatever he wants to do, or whatever he was doing to the bodies at this this time. Um, and then and Stephen's like, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want another drink. I don't, want, I don't want another drink. I have an audition tomorrow. I, I can't, I can't afford to have another drink. Yada yada yada. So I'm thinking, okay, great. He ain't gone there. And then next thing you know, they wake up. It basically blacks out. Then they wake up, and he's next to Stephen Toomey's lifeless body. And then when it pans from his feet to his face, he basically battered this man. To death. I can't think of anything worse than to be battered to death because you're going to feel every punch, hit, or whatever crunch until you die. Like, that's got to be one of the worst ways to die. Like, it's actually disgusting. He wakes up in a, like, a tiz was. He tries to resuscitate him and he's like, he, at this point, he seems like he's remorseful. Like he obviously didn't mean to do it, or he didn't know he was going to do it, because obviously he was drugged himself as well. But then, uh, he puts the body into a body bag. A bloody body bag. Not even a body bag, shut up, I'm, li- I'm lying. He puts the body into a suitcase. <laughs> it's even worse. He puts the body into a suitcase, sorry, I am tired. Um, he puts the body into a suitcase. Um, and then puts it in his grandma's basement. He brings the body to the grandma's grandma's house. Girl. He chops up the body. And then chops off the head. Wraps it in some cling film. And puts it in the box that his grandma gave to his dad. Who then his grandma now gave to him. And he basically keeps the head preserved and he kisses it on the lips. The the decapitated head of Stephen Toomey he kept in his room in a box and kissed it from time to time. This guy is so messed up. It's it's unreal. So that's the end of episode four. Now on to episode five. We're still in 1987. He goes to the funeral and wake of some guy he didn't even know because he thought he was cute in the obituary in the newspaper. And he admits that he liked them lifeless so that he could control them as he was controlled by everyone else when he was as like living. Um he claims that the first two, which were both named Stephen, <laughs> coincidentally, were both accidental deaths or murders. He didn't me- actually mean to kill them. It was out of pure a spur of the moment thing. Um, but he admits to actually murdering the others. He so happened to be of colour. But anywho. So he'd go to the bars. He'd pick up a guy. Bring them back to his grandma. Then take them down to the fruit cellar. Basically the cellar in his grandma's house. And strangle them to death. And be naked while doing... After he spikes their drinks. He'll be naked on top of them. 
while they're naked and strangle them to death, basically. Um, and he would lay with them like they were the mannequin that his grandma threw out. So if the gra- maybe if the grandma never threw out the mannequin, he would still be laying with the damn mannequin. Grandma. Well, anyway, he confesses to killing three of the guys at his grandma's house. One was black. One was I don't know what this is, but Chicano. I don't don't know what that what, what that means. I don't know if it's offensive. If it's, if it's offensive, I am sorry. Um, maybe. Okay, so I googled what that meant. It basically means Mexican, but an American who is Mexican of Mexican heritage. But I don't know if that's an offensive slur. But okay, so he was Mexican. So I don't know why they couldn't just say that. Um, and the other one was Indian or Native American, Native Indian. Um, because he thought that they were beautiful. So he had to get them home and kill them and murder them and chop them up and eat their flesh and drink their blood and store their bones and Lord knows what else. But then the black cop calls him out on his bullshit and says he targeted his victims. He basically went to, like I said before, he was smart. He went to a poor neighborhood where there was a low police presence and an area that is known for people being riddled with drugs and alcohol and stuff like that and people aren't going to be looking for these people that's why he went to that neighborhood but anyway so how he um got rid of the bodies he would triple bag the body parts and then throw them in the trash and then they'd basically go to the dumpster and be up there in the landfill and he claims that he did experiments on the body parts, so I feel like it's we're going back to like slavery times where white men would chop up black men or women um, as experiments to see what the organs look like inside, to see what their bone structures ch- structures like, to see why they what their muscle was like, like who like how why I don't understand. Um, and then some he soaked in acid. And some he'd boil till the flesh came off the bone like it's some flipping curry, chicken curry mutton. Like, oh my god. He says it got so easy that it was, that, that that's what the problem was. Because nobody suspected anything. And he blamed the smell on his taxidermy hobby. hobby. So he pretended that he had a taxidermy hobby and that he was um, picking up roadkill and stuffing them basically and doing experiments on the roadkill's body that's why it stunk in his grandma's basement because his grandma kept saying what is that smell in the basement and he says it's his taxidermy hobby it smells grandma um, he also had a devil altar um, taxidermy hobby he also had a devil altar which was creepy as hell, and his grandma was like a whole full-on Christian, Catholic, or whatever the hell she was, like Christian. And he has this devil altar in his grandma's house. Okay, so victim number of six, Ron. So he's outside the club. He, he goes to get in to his car, dead battery. Jeffrey comes to the rescue, brings him back to his grandma's house, offers him a coffee, and he spikes it. He's now spiking coffee. He's not just spiking alcohol, alcoholic drinks. He's spiking coffees. Quaffies. So, his grandma's hearing this ruckus again for the fourth time, and he's like, What the hell is going on in my house? What's up with this guy? Why is he so out of it? He's, um, Jeffrey's like, Oh, he's just super, super drunk. Grandma, he, I didn't want him to drive home because then he would, um, have a car crash or something like that, and I didn't want that on my conscience. Yada, 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 bullshit. He's telling his grandma to go back to sleep. His grandma's like, no, I'm not going back to sleep. I'm going to stay with this boy to make sure he's okay and then take him to the hospital. And then he's, he's like, he doesn't need to go to the hospital. He's going to, um, he'll just sleep it off, grandma. So then, they, um, so his grandma basically wakes up all night with this gentleman, thank you, with, um, for, with Ron. And, um, puts him on the bus to go home. Bearing in mind, he's still kind of out of it. He still barely can talk and barely can say his name or whatever. So then he, he gets to the last stop. He gets off the bus. He's walking through some cornfield and then collapses. Um, 
he wakes up in hospital, he tells the hospital staff that he was drugged last night and he's called cops because the cops need to come. So the cops come, interview him, he tells the cops that Jeffrey Dahmer drugged him. He gives the address, the name, the description, the rundown of what happened. And the cops do nothing again. Again. They would rather... They basically took Jeffrey Dahmer's side. They went to Jeffrey Dahmer's house. The grandma and Jeffrey Dahmer lied through their teeth. Well, the grandma co- kind of covered her his his tracks, but um, he um, basically lied through his teeth. And the of course the cops took the words of a convicted criminal white man over the words of a non-convicted um, person of color. So that's. Uh, it's so frustrating like it's so frustrating because things like this happen all the time in today's in today's world like we're, it's like time's frozen like we're never it's like we're never going to get out of this spiral of um white men can do anything and everyone else basically you're under the microscope um so yeah that was that he has the club seeing oh so ron goes to the club again he sees jeffrey and he warns his brother do not get into that car otherwise you're going to end up dead um the guy runs out the cab so then we skip to another victim an asian boy oh he's the brother of the first victim that you see in episode one i think it is Oh no, episode two. Yeah, so he's the brother of the um, guy, of the boy in episode two. Um, Hang on. Oh shit, this is episode six. Oh no, it's not. Victim six. So it's the, the yeah. So he's the brother of the boy in episode two, and but he escapes. Um, Jeffrey obviously um, spikes his drink, offers to give him money, and um, the boy is like no, and then he somehow just manages to escape. Thank God. And then the grandma basically sees this poor boy running down the street and doesn't think, oh, something weird is going on downstairs, let me check it out. Anyway, so then the boy obviously tells his father, because his fa- he comes home late. His father's like, why are you coming home at this time? You're like 14 years old, what, what, what are you doing? Then he basically end up, ends up being like collapsing on the bed. Obviously, the father calls the police. He tells the police. The man gets charged for one year of sexual assault in the second degree and gets only gets a year in the house of correction and he also is allowed to go to work continue to go to work and he doesn't have to tell them the actual nature of why he's in prison and the only reason why he got this light sentence is because um the judge because jeffrey reminds the judge of his own um grandson so because he looks like your family you're going to treat him as such but if he didn't look like your family then obviously you was going to send him to prison for probably like 15 years 20 years i don't know what the life life the life i don't know what the sentence is for something like that um from that point i was just so like put off watching the rest of it because i was like this is some bullshit i'm watching some bullshit i'm watching this white man run around town ripping it up left right center diagonal horizontal vertical like i just got, I, just, I just couldn't believe it so then um so then you see like this compilation of conversations that he has with his um father after every major incident so when he um got kicked out of um uni when he got kicked out of the army when he got found out about 
when he got arrested for having sex with a pinball machine. Um, basically, all the other major events. The father basically used to come up with excuses and plausible reasons as to why he was acting this way. His father also wrote him the judge a letter to be like, please go easy on my son and can you get him a counsellor and psychiatrist? The judge never got that. When the father found that out, he was like, oh, crying out loud, he needs it. But I'm thinking, why don't you pay for it? Or something. And then we get to the Hughes, where he picks up, but you don't know it at this point, but he picks up um, another black guy opposite his house. He signs that this is... um, where he lives Uh, yeah and the guy's like okay so then they start walking and then we go on to episode six this is one i just realized i just looked at time and this is long 25 minutes brain is hurting i did watch this like many many weeks ago like probably like two weeks ago so my memory's a bit sketchy um don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'm going to try and pile through episodes six seven eight and nine and ten because i've watched it all um pray for me don't forget to comment like and subscribe until next time peace peace